All right, guys, we are live. It's episode 220 of the Shooter's Mindset. Thank you guys for tuning in tonight. We got, we we're back actually last week. We didn't have a show. We we're like, fuck it. We didn't have a guest. And, <laughs> and nobody went to NRA show. So we couldn't do like a post NRA. So we would just screw it. We have, we now have our months filled with guests, but we are live here. Jennifer Seymour's joining us. What's going on, Jen? Hey, everybody. Heath Clevenger's. What's up, buddy? How's it going? It's going all right. And the guest and star of the hour. <laughs> all right. Mr. Chillfire himself. Uh, Randy Airwood's in the house. What's going on, man? All right, all right. It's going. It's good. It's good to have you on here. I was uh, always kind of a big fan of that Chill Fire series that you brought out a few videos. So that was kind of it's kind of the reason why you're on here, man. I'm like, we got to get this dude on here. Seems to be. It's going to make for a fun show. It seems. And I uh, learned a little bit about you here. Actually, didn't even know you were really involved with uh, some of the USPSAs here. So we have a couple questions going uh, as far as that here coming up here. Sure. Show sponsors here, the folks over at Tactical Shit. All right. Shop.tacticalshit.com for all your tactical shit needs, plate carriers, gun parts. They got it all over there. We got a discount code coming later on in the show for them. Um, if you want to get a live question in for Randy or of any of us here on the show, if you're watching on the YouTube side of things, top right hand corner, you can join the conversation there. There is a Facebook post if you prefer to use Facebook on the shooter's mindset on over on the Facebook page there. Just drop the comments in that post and we'll get them over to Randy throughout the show. Shootersmindset.com. All right. For your latest blogs, shop around for gun parts and keep up with the Shooters Mindset live show. You can do that all at the Shootersmindset.com. Okay. All right. So we had a question here. This is a user question that came in. I believe it's gentleman name was Bill or something like that. It says uh, everyone at Area 6 has acquired a reputation for a lot of drama. <laughs> As a sanctional coordinator, how do you attempt to mitigate or blunt the impact of some of the social media comments? Is there anything as a leader, uh, match director in USPSA, that we can do to reduce the, the criticisms? Yeah, sure. I mean, Facebook is Facebook. You, know, the, you take a lot of things with a grain of salt. But, yeah, the Area 6 Facebook page definitely has a reputation, uh, maybe to uphold. But, uh, yeah, there's a lot of uh, trash talk and craziness out there. And, I mean, my thing is you could go direct, you know, work with people directly. Whenever you see stuff like that happen, call them out because uh, 90% of the total douches online, you meet them in person, you're like, hey, that's a pretty cool guy. Uh, and you start talking to him. Oh, she's fine. You know, we had a great conversation. So, yeah, I mean, it's just go direct. Get to know people and – you know, ignore what's going on out there. So much people by adding more to it only fuel it worse that typically if you ignore it, call the person up. Hey, did you really have a problem with my match? Uh, tell me what the problem was because I always want to make a better match. Uh, it usually goes over great, you know, and they back down quick and in a hurry. Well, and what's yeah, funny, I think, is some of the people that are commenting were not even at the said match. You know, a lot of the people that are giving their opinion weren't there. Yep. Yeah. I mean, and obviously, some of the some of these new shooters or newer shooters that are shooting that match for the first time join in these Facebook groups, and then they kind of, whoa, what? Why do I even want to shoot that match? You know, what's going on? I shot Aries six a couple times, and that was a a well done match. And I don't, I don't, I just never really got it. But I guess I never shot enough area matches around the country to really know which one's better than the other or really gave a shit as far as that goes. But <clears throat> I guess, so there it is. It's kind of started off in the beginning as kind of that drama area match. But like yeah. I said, go to Rack, send an email. If you don't yeah. want to talk to Rack, you can send an email, right? That, that, send them that that an email, hit them email. But yeah, just work with the people and that'll calm it down a lot. Uh, and then I'll ask how you can help. You know, that's the biggest thing is, you know, people really uh, quiet and down fast when you're like, all right, great. Well, would you like to help out next year and run a stage yourself? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just yeah. want to show up and complain. Right. Right. All right. And we had a, a, a couple more here uh, from the same gentleman. As the match numbers go up, how are we able to not turn away a shooter and continue to grow the sport? So I guess kind uh, yeah. of like 
you know, a lot, like I said, Jen started off at a match at USPSA, her local stuff, 20 shooters when she kind of started. Now there's 90. Now you have to pay, you know, in advance and all that type of stuff, which is a good thing and a bad thing, right? Mm -hmm. It is. I mean, it's a little hard for new people to get in the groove of things. And that's where us as the folks who are out there, uh, you know, be a mentor, be helpful, educate people on where to look for matches, how to get signed up and get into it. And then when they're there, how to, you know, become part of the crew because those that are plugged in, you know, have a lot more fun and feel like coming back. Uh, but, and then, you know, as things grow, we do have to look at different locations. And one of the local clubs uh, here in Atlanta, the indoor matches were getting really big and full and then found another range nearby that was willing to host. And they started offering a separate night of the same club. So it's Tuesday nights in one town, Thursday nights in another. Right. That's a bunch of work. Yes, it is. And, that, and that's where the hard part is for the sport is – on those volunteers, the match directors, the people running things, it's hard enough to run one monthly match. When you're running two weekly matches, uh, it requires a lot of people to chip in. Yeah. Yeah. I can't imagine that. It yeah, says so a lot of people are talking about it's possible to miss fast enough to win matches. Uh, does Randy have any thoughts on increasing the penalties for Mike's and providing awards for the superior marksmanship, kind of like an – you know, the dude that shot the most alphas kind of award or something. And what is an opinion? What is it, your opinion on the debate of eliminating major scoring and changing power factors? All right. Uh, missing fast enough. That's part of the sport to me. I mean, it, it's like uh, one of those things. The sport is based on the trade off between speed, power and accuracy. And so, you know, if you can go fast enough, uh, that's, you know, good and cool um and as a stage designer i think it's great to have a balance and a mix of things some stages that can be blistered through and eat up a miss um, and then stages that require enough slowdowns that you know a couple deltas and you're off the first page of the results um but no i like it i think that having uh, that balance as part of the sport is is cool and worth figuring out stage by stage that's something I do a lot of is like run the math of a stage before I've run the stage to see what is going to be an appropriate hit factor. Where can I accept and absorb, you know, a little bit less sight picture to speed things up. Um, so yeah, I, I don't, I don't sweat that. Uh, the, what was the second part was increasing penalties for mics. Uh, sorry. No, I mean, I, I actually think that the numbers work out pretty good now because if it, if you go too far that way, then it's an accuracy-only match, and we've eliminated the importance of speed. And you know, I think that's a really cool part of the sport. Right. And I think lastly here, he said, providing rewards for superior marksmanship, so that accurate all alpha guy. And your opinion on eliminating major scoring or changing power factors? <clears throat> uh. You know, something I've done with my buddies before, we did last year at Mississippi, and uh, I hope Lescar is up for a rematch, is doing like a alpha count uh, side bet uh, amongst your crew. Uh, things like that are kind of fun to, you know, increase awareness of hitting A's. Uh, so, you know, gamble amongst your friends, uh, maybe, but. You know, I, I'm okay with some kind of superlative awards at matches too. I mean, keep things fun. So you could offer just a, a fun prize for most alphas, most deltas, most misses, uh, best right. hair, uh, whatever you wanted to offer. Make awards a little bit more fun than here's the classes and categories. Thanks for coming. Uh, that might drive some people up. And then power factor, you know, I'm, I don't see a problem with it where it is. Yes, it's kind of an arbitrary number that was selected one day, but it kind of works. I mean, you can tell the guy shooting 150 power factor ammo next to the guy shooting 175, and it's like that is a lot easier to shoot gun. Uh, so having a power factor is cool. Um, you know, Ipsic's even higher for like classic division. 
I tell you, there's a, I shoot nine because I did three gun and again, I don't want to buy another gun. So I shoot nine millimeter. I shoot minor and everything. I shoot limited minor. Um, and one day I was fussing. I was having a, a day where I had a few more Charlies than I wanted to have. And, uh, a couple more deltas and i was like oh i need to get a major gun i need to get a major gun and one of the older guys who i love to death i was just frustrated you know i love him to death and he came over and he goes that doesn't bother dewey and dewey's one of our shooters that shoots minor and just for fun he'll come shoot like his shield or something just because he gets bored you know he's an excellent shooter and he's like it doesn't bother dewey it, it won't bother you if you get alphas there's no difference and i was like I'm so glad you just said that to me. I needed someone to say that to me. Thank you. And so, you know, there I went. I was like, okay, back to dry fire. <laughs> yep. There you go. Uh, a couple live ones here. Uh, it says, hum Humble Marksman says, chill fire. Just in all caps. Uh, Nathan Carter, what's the secret sauce to handle the hot weather at matches? Nathan Carter, secret sauce. Secret sauce. He's into secret sauce. I uh, hear, uh, but no, I, I mean, um, you got to stay chill. That is, that is an important factor in all you do. Uh, but I do believe in it, uh, for shooting and, you know, hydration, man, hydrate before the match all day during. And if you're still peeing, you're doing it right. <laughs> right on. A uh, Havoc Legion shooting team says, look forward to hearing the show tonight and that he is checking in. Uh, Chris says Randy and the team host an awesome match at Strong Point. So just some compliments there. Right on. All right. Uh, let's get into this here. Uh, your Chill Fire video series. I don't know if you attended this to kind of go where it's been going or how it's gotcha. gone or if you attended it to be kind of a video series, right? Uh, it's kind of taken over the Facebooks when they come out. Um, do, you really, do you really do this as a part of your uh, dry fire routine? Uh, and, uh, did you think it'll be this big of a hit? Uh, so yes, that is, uh, what I do No, I had no idea what was going to happen. And it was just a total spontaneous thing. One night I'm sitting there and, uh, I do video dry fire and live fire a lot. I love, uh, video analysis. And so, yeah, I, I was sitting there running the video for dry fire one night and I was like, and I have been known to play some pretty sweet tunes uh, while uh, getting in some practice. And I was like, hey, this ain't love fire. This ain't dry fire. This is chill fire. And, uh, yeah, it, it just became a thing. And the more and more I, I implemented it, the more I believed in it and was doing it. And then, you know, I got some uh, uh, from uh, Premier, maybe some of the Bluetooth in-ears. Uh, mm -hmm. so that I can play over Bluetooth out on the range. And it's a little cumbersome during matches because you can't hear everybody else and hang out as much. Uh, but when I'm practicing alone, especially, yeah, I run it all the time. I mean, it's something that helps. I believe in like uh, repetition and consistency and having a, a, a routine that you go through. And so that helps frame a routine to you know have a rhythm to it and have something that you can get in the mode and so you're doing the same thing every time and that helps me a lot yeah you always hear some people say that you know hey what's a you know we had this question thrown around how do i make dry form more entertaining some people just think it's boring as shit yeah and i mean that was part of it because i was one um who didn't and i to be totally honest i still don't uh, do like the daily dry fire uh, that I know would help me out a lot. Um, I do a good bit, especially like leading up to world shoot. I did do it every day, uh, but no, it's not uh, all the time kind of thing. And because it is boring as hell to just stand there and do draws and reloads. And then, you know, I got Ben's book and uh, Mike Seaclander's book and all the and went through that and i was like okay there's a few better drills but it's still pretty boring to stand here uh, like that and so now i try to set up scenarios where i do i'll look at whatever match i'm going to shoot next elements from the match and 
you know, try to replicate that in my basement. Boom. There we go. Uh, the picture we use for the announcement post of the show is one from world shoot. Um, can you explain kind of that, that stage? It seems like you were handcuffed or some type of straps around your hand. Yeah, that was a pretty sweet stage. Um, it was, you know, over there, there were no real gimmicks. That's what I loved about the match. Even that was like a prop, but it did do what it needed to do. So you started off and your arms were handcuffed in and your mags were on one side, your gun was on one side. And I don't think anybody could exactly reach both. So you had to like decide first, do I go gun first or mag first? And then once you did, you had enough to get them together. But once you were off on one side, you kind of, do I transfer the gun? Do I do this really awkward lean, hold the gun in close kind of thing? So it presented a real interesting challenge uh, to solve. And you know, we worked really well together, uh, our classic team, and we're able to you know, kind of talk through ways to shoot it. And okay, if you kneel and squat just like this, you can keep both hands on it throughout the whole stage. And uh, yeah, that was a pretty awesome stage. It was you know, one of the more challenging ones there to kind of figure out the challenge, solve it, and then go out and execute. And there we go. We've got a bunch of live ones here coming in, one from Gary. How many uh, crawfish can one guy eat between match days? I think we're going to find out on Saturday night uh, in Mississippi Classic. That's the jam over there. And so there will be, I forget the number. It's like a 1,000 pounds, maybe more than, I don't know. It's like ridiculous when those, giant trash cans come out and they start dumping crawfish on the tables. And then at the end, there's very little left. So uh, I think we're going to find out on Saturday. He says 900. This is the number he was looking for. Well, yeah. he probably can. <laughs> yeah. So uh, speaking of that. Sounds uh, like a million. Yeah. The, the Mississippi, Mississippi Classic. There's a article on the shootersmindset.com that was done. I don't know, maybe a year ago, I believe. Uh, what I'm forget, and I'm forgetting her name. Uh, it's uh, Tiffany, Tiffany's daughter from Phoenix Trinity Firearms. She wrote a great article on that match specific. So mm -hmm. check it out if you're maybe a first timer to that match and want to kind of get in the groove and know how it's kind of rolls. There is an article on theshootersmindset.com regarding that match. So check that one out, and I'll share that around, knowing that it's coming up. Uh, so, uh, Willie here says, uh, Wally here says, uh, is there a rumor? There is a rumor that Randy will be our next area director. <laughs> that is an unfounded rumor that Wally himself, uh, has tried to uh, push an agenda along, but no, I am, uh, content being the past few years, Georgia section coordinator, zero aspirations beyond that. I've offered it up yet again for uh, nominations for this year to take over that role as well. Uh, but I have zero desire to take it on uh, amongst this area, especially. I might move and then do it somewhere else. <laughs> there you go. Well, Chris also adds, uh, where did you learn USPSA stages on? Uh by shooting. I mean, really, it's kind of, you know, traveling around. I got into it fast and furiously. Like, I showed up at our local indoor range, and I think there was a sign that said something about a handgun competition. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Real guns? And we're, like, competing with each other, and I've always, you know, wanted to beat people at things. And so <laughs> that was for me. And, and I got into it, and kind of immediately was like, how can I help? Let's get, you know, set up stages. And as we're setting up, uh, Larry Turner was a local guy who had designed a lot of the stages we use here and at South River, and, and he's awesome at it. And I'd just watch and then go to those and then travel around. And, you know, I was printing out every match book and had a diagram to work uh, targets, uh, how they fit in and all that, and then started designing for our local matches. And it's like, okay, what's a prop or a challenge that you want to present uh, to people? And then, you know, put it out there and see how it works, get feedback. Uh, but, I mean, really it is from just putting different matches and seeing what people enjoy and put up your own creative spin on it. 
Yeah, I mean, I've done, <clears throat> and I can see that, that you know, there's probably some criticism behind doing some stage designs. You work really hard into it. You, I mean, there was like this, I'm sure there's some type of online portal. I used it uh, before it went away. And you can, you know, just drop all the little stage props and do your thing. And then you set it up on, on match day and it, something gets exposed. And then you got some know-it-all shooter that says, well, that target's three feet from the next one. And, and that's a cunt hair too long, yeah. you know, and, and then, you know, and then, and it gets blown up and then you got to change shit last minute and you're like, well, shit. Well, okay. Well, that didn't work out how I was supposed to do it. Uh, yeah. Heath, you did, you did some stage designing in your day. What, what's your take on this? Uh, well, I, I kind of learned mine the same way, just going to matches and then helping set up and, and get things ready. And, and then I was at the Clinton house last year helping out with that. And, uh, I just generally try to set up stages that I know I'd like to shoot and I don't like hinky BS that people, I, I see that. I don't know what it is. Um, see if I can put this politically correct. A lot of times when people start doing it, it seems that they want to add in unnecessary challenges that are very unrealistic to oh, yeah. anything else you've ever seen. And I always stay away from that because I always hate that when I go to a match and it's like, you want us to shoot a shotgun prone? Under <laughs> no, no, that that's nobody does that. There's a reason for that, yeah. you know. So I just try to set stages up that I like to shoot. You know, I like to have a good mix. Uh, I like really smoking fast stuff. That's just for the, you know, like you talk about uh, some of the some of the USPSA stuff, like you can shoot it without sights. It's not far enough away or hard enough to shoot that, that you really need that. But there's a reason people keep coming back to shoot that because it's fun. It might not be that much of a challenge, but it sure is fun to see how fast I can, I can make that thing go and still hit a target, you know, and, uh, or how fast you can get your target to target transitions. Right. And then throwing in the challenges on top of it. And I think that's the key to, good matches is being able to build in fun factor and challenge at the same time without putting in the hinky BS that people like to throw in there, make it fun and make it challenging, but let the, let the shooting be the challenge. Don't, you know, most times shooting doesn't need an artificial challenge. You know, we got to have this many targets cause we got to have a reload or this many reloads or I want the no. open guy to have to read. No, no. Just build a stage. Build a stage. It's fun to shoot. Yeah. It'll be a challenge to shoot the stage and have fun with it. Some of the best stages, I think, are deceivingly simple looking. And people are like, oh, that's it. And then you shoot, you're like, that was my favorite stage. Mm -hmm. I love stages that if you stand and watch a squad, there's like at least four or five different ways that it's shot. You know what I mean? And uh, you can shoot different to your strength. And it took me a little while to get to the point where I was like, no, I'm not shooting it the way you tell me. I, you know, you think I should shoot it. You know, and people are like, oh, you should do it this way. You know, and I know now what I should do. It might not be what you should do, but I know what I should do. And I love those stages that have where you can do to your strengths and do different. But yeah, some of the ones that seem really simple end up being the best stages. Yeah. I know we had a conversation one time. Uh, well, I've heard it said, I didn't actually have the conversation, but somebody asked Greg Jordan, you know, was the stage ever too easy? You know, like, do you ever walk up to a stage and just be like, oh, this is too easy. This shouldn't even be here, you know? And uh, his response is, no stage is too easy. He said, matter of fact, those are usually traps because if it's super easy, then you think you can blow through it super fast. And that's generally where you, you find your mistakes because you, you just get to going just a little too quick. So, you know, when somebody at that level, I mean, they'd probably be like asking Vogel if there was a stage that was too easy or something, you know, three gun the USPSA. But I would imagine he would probably say something similar that nothing is too easy. It's just each thing has its own challenge. You know? Right. Right. <clears throat> Right. I'm mean, speaking of some matches here. Uh, you did very well at the Battle of the Bluegrass match recently. Are you disappointed that you can no longer sandbag single step? <laughs> uh, no, no, no. Uh, thank you. That was a cool match. That's another one like 
there are a few that are really hot for me uh, to try to make sure I make. Florida Open, I love starting out the year on one of the more challenging matches out there. Uh, Battle on the Bluegrass is fantastic. Anytime you can get just two divisions, get a lot in each, and get good competition and all, um, and it's just fun. Great people, great stages. Mississippi has its identity, and Saturday night party is fantastic. Uh, so, yeah, that, that one's a great match to do. And, uh, uh, you know, single stack is one that kind of comes and goes in numbers-wise. So for the longest time, it's been, for me, if you ain't first, you're last. I mean, you're, you're in it to win it uh, anyway. So the classification didn't much matter. There were never going to be five uh, master single stacks anyway. Uh, so you're never going to get that, you know, coveted prize for that. So right now I'm, I'm out of the running for class trophies and still got to try to win them all. How long did it take you to get to Grandmaster in each? Uh, limited, I think it was like three years, something like, yeah, it was about three years in that. I, I went fairly quickly through, you know, Buddy and I started working and showed me a little bit of how to train and I went to town on that and, you know, made it through that last, four or five percent is tough especially the way the system works anything below an 85 uh doesn't count and starts to roll off so whenever you do get 86s 87s you know those start blowing away your 96s and 97s uh, so you know that's part of what took so long in single stack was it's what i was shooting and i don't ever just reshoot 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 so i shoot it like it's a match it's always part of a match um, and so i'm getting that you know 92 95 and once those start averaging out you've got like six 92s a, a hundred or two still doesn't change the average enough so it, once it's easier to do fast because you know a couple hundreds make a huge difference whenever you've only got four or five scores that count once you start getting a saturation of right around that you know 94 range it's pain <laughs> yeah. there you go i'm gonna move into a discount corner portion of the show we're actually fairly on time with stuff this time around on the show so I'll try to save you money from some great companies who support the show jen you usually start us off what do we have you can get 10% off at carbonarms.us on Carbon Arms shotgun shell caddies, ratchet belts, all that good stuff um, with the code TSM10. You can also get 10% off in our Shooter's Mindset store with the best code on the panel, which is Jen TSM10. Don't listen to Heath in a minute. His has way more letters than mine. Um, but check out the Shooter's Mindset store. You can get 10% off with Jen TSM10. And we have 10% off with we, for We Bad. Hold on. Where's my bag? For only, I think, another week. Maybe two weeks. It's until like May uh, 25th, I think. Anyway, and the code is uh, Shooter's Mindset 0424 because that was the day that they were on our show. So you can get... 10% off of shooting bags um, for PRS if you want to do a little bit of that. Sweet I think deal. that's all. Keith, Ben, you're up. What do you got? Just remember to unmute yourself. <clears throat> yeah, no, I was taking a second for it to pop up. Um, we got uh, American Defense, three gun, 10. The number three, the word gun, and then 10, the number again. Um, Red Hill Tactical, Clevenger, all caps, get you 10% right there. Dangerous but good for Nikki is uh, Nikki DBG10. That'll save you 10% over there. And uh, of course, Nikki's TSM10 because I'm just a stand in. And we got criteria on, but. It's my show. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> if you want to know about the criterion, then you, can. you shut it, woman. All right. 
No, <laughs> not like that. <laughs> All right, what do we what do we got? Uh, Criterion and hit a, hit you guys up for yeah. those codes. Yeah, on the, Criterion yeah. and TrueSpec. We can't put those out to the masses, but we'd love to get you hooked up. Make sure you're getting the right thing. Um, that's, that's, I find that a lot more with barrels. People are like I want to do X, Y, and Z with a gun. What you know? What fits the bill? Or what's your best experience? And you know, they get a little okay. personal touch there. Point people in the right direction. You have Randy. You got some uh, discount codes on your end, right? What do you got? Yeah, uh, the one special today. John and Chuck at Shooters Connection said, uh, "Chill fire, all caps." One word. Uh, well, they'll do twenty percent off the. Uh, competition belt uh, that's what i've been using forever and they rock cards so use chill fire uh for that uh and then you can use randy at uh both uh red hill tactical and sns bullets uh we'll get you a discount off of those as well boom there you go um some quick ones here on my end shop.tacticalshit.com tsm10 saves you 10 percent uh internet wide on their online shop or if you're in the St. Peter's Missouri area shout it at the cashier at their retail store and you get 10% off there terrantacticalinnovations.com TSM10 for all their stuff uh, UM Tactical TSM10 pretty much TSM across the board TSM10 for all these uh, Rand Seal P and uh, what is it Gallant Bullets save TSM10 for 10% off on there uh, the only different one is Mindset 16 for RanzioP.com for all your lube needs, but there you go. Pretty much good in Macy's, TSM10, Toys R Us, if they still got toys, TSM10, shout that out. All right. Um, what else we got here? Uh, we got a couple, I know, live ones that we're going to hit here. Also, your Positech Grips uh, sure. by uh, Tech Techwear USA. You added these to your gun. How did it take your game to the next level? Uh, they're pretty balling. Uh, so, yeah, the Positec grip is tapered for your pleasure uh, right there. And <laughs> it's pretty sweet. So it for people who like a little bit meatier grip to hold on to, it's great. But it's actually narrower at the top than a 2011. So uh, people with shorter fingers can still use it pretty well. What I like is the taper helps you get your elbows out a little bit more. And so stabilize your platform. And, uh, I mean, they're grippy and feel awesome. So as soon as I tried one out, uh, Bob Novak's awesome dude. And we started working on a couple slight changes and they are the jam. So yes, uh, I believe they're guaranteed for all, all alphas. I, I heard that somewhere. So, <laughs> so I just need to get the grips and then that's right. Rock them. There you go. Um, the humble marshman said, do you think Tyler Turner, would be a great Area 6 director. Absolutely. I would nominate him. Uh, I think he could take the heat and uh, and deliver on making Area 6 great again. <laughs> there you go. Uh, David said, I really do like stages with optional ways to shoot as well. So just kind of agreeing with the stage design stuff. Steph says hello to everybody during the show. Um, what is this? I just bought a uh, laser hit. A new Glock 34 with a JP Magwell and Dawson Precision. Thanks for the video. I think that oh, yeah, I think he's referencing a video, a review that I did with a JP Magwell a long time ago on some Dawson Precision base pads. Uh, appreciate you watching the show, and I'm glad that video kind of helped you uh, get your gun set up. And I think that's it. I think that's it for the live stuff. Anything on the Facebook stuff? No, nope. we're All good right. there. Good stuff. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, who are your favorite shooters to squad with? And uh, can you do an impression of any of the shooters? <laughs> uh, favorite to shoot with? I mean, my Akai teammates are awesome. We have so much fun. We try to have a reunion at some match each year, and they're a blast. And my local buddies. I mean, you know, these are folks we shoot with uh, throughout the week and train together. And so it's really fun to go to a match together and know how each person shoots and uh, can talk through it. Uh, but then, I, you know, the whole world shoot experience was amazing, and Jeremy, Elias, Rob uh, were just fantastic to shoot together with and work on stages and encourage each other and, uh, you know, keep everybody moving in the right direction. 
impersonations, uh, impressions. <laughs> I'm not amazing at those. Uh, probably, uh, you know, Dave Savigny is another really good buddy, awesome, awesome shooter and, and guy. And uh, his, it, my impersonation of him is the most impactful thing he ever does for me. Um, shooting matches constantly reminds me of one thing and one word. And he just comes up and says, aim. And that's like the type of thing I'm big on. The, you know, repetition is like I would run that through my mind a lot before I shoot. It's like, oh, yeah, all things pulled together. You still have to aim that thing. Yeah, I mean, I mean, arguably, but uh, Dave Savigny is probably one of the best best guys to pick up a handgun and play the game. So yeah. if you got him on your side, uh, that's a pretty good thing. Uh, what do we got here? Any upcoming uh, matches, events, any goals you have for yourself? I mentioned Mississippi's this weekend. Looking forward to that. That's a, just a fun match uh, all around together. I know the crew there has been working hard, so uh, looking forward to getting over and shooting that. Uh, then the Ipsic Nationals is summer, and that kind of leads up to what is the big, my goal is to make the next world shoot. I mean, I would love, love, love uh, to go to Thailand and uh, shoot with the team again. That, that The team concept is fantastic, and I, I love that component of it. And, you know, we'll do everything I can to try to qualify for that because it's kind of Super Bowl of the sport and just amazing. Did you have a hard time getting your gun over there and ammo and all? It was surprisingly easy. Like, honestly, if my wife had not packed an apple on the way back home, no one would have ever asked for a piece of paper or anything. Like, we got there and the guns were on the main carousel. And I just picked it up and took it to the rental car. And then we, you know, of course, at the match, they look at the guns. But I had all my forms. Uh, but it was crazy. No, I, I brought my wife and girls as pack mules. So they each brought 250 rounds of ammo, you know, in their bags. I was not wanting uh, anybody to stop and be like, what does a six-year-old need 250 9-millimeter <laughs> rounds for? Uh, but, yeah, it was Mind crazy. Crazy easy. We got back. And so, yeah, when they found the apple or asked about it, she's like, oh, yeah, I did buy this over there. Like red flags all going off and they escort us and so then the guy pulls my bag through and he said is there anything you may want to tell me about what's going on in that bag right there i was like well i mean there's guns and ammo sure but what my phone what is it you're uh concerned about there sir uh, and so of course they want to play with it you know we pull it out and they're sitting there all finger banging my gun looking at whoa this is amazing i've never seen anything like that before so yeah, it was pretty cool that's yeah. hilarious yeah i had the and it's kind of different it's a little different but going uh shooting a match over in puerto rico same deal you have to you have to kind of let their local law enforcement know you have to get a special uh kind of firearms license for the days that you're there and you do that shit with the match director or the person who's organizing the match, and it is streamlined, man. They don't, there was nothing. It was just grab your bag, head to the hotel, and get ready for the match. It was really, there's a little extra step in there, but it was really no big deal. So that's why after shooting that match, I recommended, you know, anybody who wanted to go to Puerto Rico to shoot their, their USPSA matches and their IDPA matches, go down there, man. It's simple, it's easy. Beautiful island, and it was a good time. Good food, cheap beer. Cheap nice. beer. Yeah, so there you go. Um, what else do we have, Heath? You had a couple things you wanted to throw in there. Uh, just, I know there seems to always be a discussion. I think it's a good question because uh, the ups and downs and lateral movements. But uh, where where would you, being a really active guy in USPSA, where would you like to see them go as a as entity? Uh, I mean, it, there's a lot of growth, and so. You know, I, I think it's really just about deeper penetration in areas and awareness. It, while, to me, it's super popular and everybody knows about it, as the greater uh, world is concerned, nobody knows about it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's just it really is growth. I'm excited to see Steel Challenge pick up and uh, go farther and faster and 
it's a great gateway drug to get people into it anyway. And so, uh, you know, I just, I think growth and growth amongst uh, the, like, juniors and things like that, that's always been something people talk about. And like, man, we need to get more juniors involved. And there's things that kind of get started and just, it's, a, it's really tough to do. Uh, and there have been people try, but that, you know, that's an area that, if you can get them started, because that was one of the things I noticed uh, in France was that the Russian program, Philippine programs, I mean, they're like identifying kids early on. OK, you have some of the aptitudes to be good at this. And they start investing in those kids. Uh, I don't know how early, you know, like 10, 12 years old. They're like in a program to become a world class competitor. And, you know, I'd love to see a little bit more. Uh, you know, centralized education to to foster that so that people can uh, get into it earlier and faster. Man, I wish I'd known about it uh, early in life. I'd have been all over it. I think yeah. you're right. There are like a lot of people. I know we feel like it because all of our friends on Facebook are all shooters. And you think everybody knows about it. I still have people that are like, you do what? Yeah. What's, what's your hot? Like with real guns, why do y'all do that? You know, they have no idea that it goes on. And so like, I'm sitting there thinking, clean. like, if, and I know you got to fight the anti gun culture in the process, but there has got to be, like, if you went and set up a TV at a mall, right, and you showed people run around and shooting targets, you know, like, we do this safely every weekend and you could do it too. Mm hmm. You know, how many people would you actually, and then like what other programs could you garner to kind of like, I think we missed a mark by not doing, and this sucks, but uh, because everybody's got, they're busy and their time's worth something. But I think it sucks that we don't have more free programs for beginners. Like, look, show up the day before and we'll spend two hours with you going, okay, you read the rule book. This is how it applies. This don't take your gun out unless you're over here. Don't load your gun at all until you're told to. Like these are all major no nos. Like you get sent home. You spent twenty, forty bucks or whatever for for nothing if you do those things because you're going to get disqualified and and kind of just pay that pathway, make it easier to get into, and then a much broader cross section of America to, to draw people in. Cause as many people love shooting guns on video games, you can't tell me that at least 25, imagine if you got 25% of the gamers to buy a gun and go to a match. Right. You know, we do, a, charts. we do that intro to competitive shooting class here. Um, that I help teach once a year. And I think we're going to do it twice a year this year. We're going to start, we're going to do another one six months after, you know, we did it in February. So maybe this fall and it's like $20 to join or to come to the class, which basically pays their range fee is right. why we do it. Mainly we feed on pizza for lunch and we have classroom time in the morning um, that goes through rules and safety stuff. We have the blue guns. We show them how to draw. We show them how to do mag changes without turning the gun, you know, go over a lot of the safety. It's very safety oriented. And then the afternoon after we eat the pizza, we go through and we set up a, um, a steel challenge stage, uh, like a USPSA classifier and like a USPSA um uh, like field stage where you're having to do some moving and they basically like we're at the different stages stationed and they can roam and do whichever ones more than once that they want. Before we do that, we line them all up and make them um, draw and we do the make ready commands like where they would have to make ready and then we right. go beep and, and we do it completely dry fire, not, not any ammunition around and let them just get used to the commands completely dry fire. And we've gotten the best response. We've got some people that are like hooked from that class and right. like love it, but we do it for like 20 bucks. I'm not a grand master by any means. If you want to learn how to like be a grand master, don't come to me, but I can teach the basics of right. how to Safety. not get DQ'd and <laughs> how to, you know, how to the come first, out and have fun. The first match is, did you complete it without DQing or scaring anybody? Right. Because if you can do that, you did good. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, those classes right. my, are awesome. My, yeah. my mean, take just, on it is just doing a just a generic. And I have people ask me, "Hey, where do I go?" You know, I live in South Florida, or you know, how do I know when there's matches and what do I need to bring? I get that quite often. And just doing a general Google search of you know basic hey shooting competitions, a lot of the local pages are like lost in the interwebs. Yeah. I mean, and I know uh, a lot of this is volunteer based, and there's not a lot of funds in the club to maybe focus on, you know, Google AdWords or whatever to get that boost in the the search results. But just doing a a general you know, shooting competitions, just Google search. And I'm like four or five pages back, and I don't see anything as far as local websites. I mean, you get the NRA stuff. You get everybody to practice score. Right. You get the NRA. NRA stuff is like the first thing that pops up, and then USPSA is not is not far behind that one. Actually, right underneath it, and I'm sure with a few clicks of the mouse, you can find what local matches through the USPSA.org website, and the NSF jumps up, but. I don't know. Some people who are curious don't want to click through all those. So if we can get some of these local clubs to get their internet page where it can be seen by just a general search instead of being, you have to know like tssa.us forward slash club, you know what I mean? Right. That kind of disappears. But then again, funds are hard to come by for some clubs, so I understand why, but I can see that being a boost in some curiosity of some folks who want to play. I think some of the best advertisement is Facebook. Like all of us normal people that are not tactical Timmy's necessarily for a living. Like I'm a nurse. So I have a lot of friends that are from my nursing job or from my church and they they get on my Facebook and they're like, what is that you do? And I've had a few people, I mean, last week I'm in the ER working and an EMT came in over the sick patient. And he's like, Hey, I want to talk to you about three gun later. I mean, not right now. Cause like he can't breathe, but later I want to talk to you about three gun, you know? So having more, the more people do it and post about it, it gets people curious and then they want to ask questions and yeah. Yeah. snowballs. There you go. There's our shake on it here. Uh, you, but Randy, you shoot a lot of 1911s, at least recently. How do you keep your 1911s running? What parts do you find you change the most or what parts are you really looking at? You know, a big match coming up. Hey, maybe I should change this recoil spring or do you even give a shit about that stuff? Uh, <laughs> and talk a little bit about your Akai custom single stack. Oh, yeah, nice. So, uh, maintenance, I mean, I'm a little bit anal about the gun. So, to me, that's part of, that is a big part of the game. You know, you get people who uh, finish a match and they're like, you know, my gun did this and did that. If it hadn't been for that, I'd have won the match. It's like, well, that's part of the match is your equipment and keeping it up. So, yeah, I, I have a regiment, you know, I'm big on consistency of stuff. So, it's like... Uh, the week of a match, I'll do my last practice session I did today, take the gun, deep clean every screw, pin, and everything comes out and inspected and look for any signs of issues. Uh, everything gets super, super clean and lubed back up with CUDA lube, uh, put back together, and you know, then I'll do like a 20-round uh, test fire sometime before the match and then do a quick field strip and wipe it down and it's going to run. You know, that, that's been my system for it. But, I mean, parts-wise, I mean, I look for wear, but honestly, a really well-built gun doesn't have things that uh, are going to just wear out. I mean, springs, of course, are going to wear out over time. And, you know, you may notice ejection issues and replace it. But, uh, I mean, for me, it's like twice a year uh, will I swap out something like that. My mags, once a year. Um, depending on what they are, like my trip mags, I'd send to Virgil and he'll refurbish the mags every year for you and get everything redimensioned. Um, and you know, my nine, I shoot Dawson mags in those. And so I'll, you know, go through and just do a super deep redimension and check that nothing sticks. Cause you know, nothing worse to me than wanting to blame your equipment, uh, for a match. But yeah, a Kai custom gun has been good to me from the beginning and uh you know this is my super fancy favorite single stack this is the nine uh that i shoot most matches with and i mean it's just it's flawless like it it runs a hundred percent it's accurate a hundred percent i've made some funny videos of shooting it and it really was shooting you know 100 yards offhand uh and don't have any problems with it but you know confidence in your equipment 
is a big part of the game. You know, people ask me, do I need this uh, bell or whistle or upgrade? And I'm always like, when you stand over that gun, if it makes you that much more confident, then yeah, sure, go for it. If you can afford it, get that thing and put it on your gun because if you're going to feel like it's going to get you more alphas, it very well might. Uh, but, you know, starting with something that is dialed in for you is going to make a big difference and that's you know why i started working with shay early i bought my first gun and was like dude i love this thing i'm going to tell people about it i'd love to be on your team I, at the time i was like i don't even know what a team is or what you get for that or what do you want from me for that but just i'm going to be telling people about it because i love it and you know maybe one day i can join your party there it is couple live ones here, and then we're probably cl close to wrapping this one up. Nathan Carter here says, uh, did PCC bring in new peeps? Oh, yeah, no doubt. Uh, that's been a good one. I, I was a naysayer about both PCC and Carry Optics. Uh, initially, I was like, welfare open? That's stupid. Uh, why does anybody <laughs> want to shoot that? You know, those things can't stay running. The dots always break in. Uh, but... I mean, it's proved me wrong on that one. PCC, I knew, I was like, I'm not sure it fits in our, you know, USPSA style matches. And, you know, maybe they'll figure out some rules to make it. And they did. And, yeah, I, I know so many people that have converted over. They're like, hey, I want to practice with my rifle platform. Uh, I'm going to shoot PCC in a... Uh, USPSA match and try it out. And so, I mean, you, yeah, you really do convert some people. I think for a newcomer, one of the things I would love to see, we've talked about it, and I know one club uh, did it for a little bit, was have a rental gun there. If somebody shows up to the match and wants to shoot, that's the easiest thing you could give them, right? PCC, gigantic mag with 42 rounds in it. Like, you're never going to have to really reload it unless there's a classifier. Just throw it in and shoot it like you would an AR and let people get used to the, you know, flow of the sport. So I think it's been great. I play with mine, especially in the winter time. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. But a, then it has to run all the time. Like everything. Yeah. It's, it's all about getting your gear up and running. So, uh, there are some that do and some that don't. I bought, uh, the JP, uh, first and i took it straight to a match and i think i've cleaned it twice and shot probably 20 30 matches with it and it just runs and does its thing but i didn't tinker with it i hadn't added a buddy here in atlanta camp creek gunworks he makes a cool uh, lower price gun i have that one same thing took it out shot it it rocks and runs you know so for people you know 900 and something bucks i can get uh, a gun with everything I need to run the sport is pretty cool. Yeah, agreed there. I mean, it seems to be, I think that was one of the key things of getting PCC involved. It was going to bring new people in. Now, does it really, I mean, does it really fit? I mean, that's a, it's a, you know, it's up to who you talk to. I mean, it can be a little bit of a pain in the ass since where I've seen it, but I have one. I, you know, I think it's a good, to get people involved, hell, you know, you can shoot that thing accurate as shit. You're like, oh, that's 25 yards. Look at my group. It's right, you know, it's like, you know, whatever. Yeah. You I mean, yeah, maybe they that. take an extra 20 seconds in the make ready or unload and show clear, but, you know, a six shot revolver takes an extra 30 seconds to shoot the stage. So there you have it. There you have it. Yeah. There we go. I think lastly here, and then we're going to wrap this one up. Uh, what do we have? Tips on winning a big stage. I think we talked about tips on winning in that big moment kind of world shoot ish maybe maybe someone's big stage is a local match maybe someone's an area match whatever uh kind of hit on a lot of points throughout the show today but do you got anything to add uh, i mean my big thing is that whole repetition have your routine and system down so that no matter where you are that can be consistent so yes there's lights and camera and action all around uh or even, you know, it's raining or something else. Uh, keep your system together. My rule of thumb, I tell, you know, a lot of folks around is uh, visualization. If I've shot a stage 20 times in my mind before I shoot it, 
I'm pretty sure I'm going to execute it well. That's like my benchmark. What I try to go back to is if I can run through a stage and not just like, okay, I'm going to run there and shoot that, run there and shoot that. Like, no, for real, like my mind's eye says, here's exactly what I'm going to see. And it's kind of like what a first person camera is going to go through a whole stage and do. And here's where the gun's going to be and what the sight's going to look like and the exact point on the target I'm going to be aiming for what the recoil is going to feel like, how fast I can get off those splits. If I can visualize it at that level at pace 20 times before I shoot it, you know, I get my theme song in my mind and set my, my super chill on. And no matter where I am, you know, I should be able to execute it the same. There you go. Any live guys? We're going to wrap this one up. We're good on my end. Yeah, I got nothing. There you go. So I think that we're going to wrap this one out, bring this one here to down. Shout outs. Jen, what do you got? All right. Uh, prime ammunition. Which side is it on? I can't see. I got my new shirt, finally. I've been fussing about wanting a t shirt. So I got my t shirt in the mail today and had to put it on. If you need any ammo, go to Prime Ammunition. They just announced uh, six millimeter cream more. That got announced at NRA last weekend. So or two weekends ago, I guess now. So if you need ammo, get with primeammo.com and check them out. They've got great stuff. Uh, Lanzang Tactical, uh, Night Force Optics, Under Industries for awesome jerseys right there. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Back, no, the background. I got it blown up. I got his screen, Randy's uh, screen blown up as you're doing shout outs and just a, oh. going on in the background. <laughs> Some of them are yeah. There you are. I didn't even notice you there. Oh, that is a, the funniest video. Yeah, you need <laughs> to play to the sound. My uh, theme song, and this one, uh, it might be it. Might be yeah. the one. 22. There we are. Are we? Uh, 22. Um, what else? Shooters of Augusta and Sharp Shooters of Augusta. We got a match tomorrow night at Shooters of Augusta. Um, so if you're in Augusta, go check them out. Um, I know I'm forgetting someone. Night Force Optics, did I say them? Uh, Kestrel. Uh, you're like sponsored by too many people nowadays. I can't even keep up with yours. Oh, my gosh. You have a little <laughs> black book full. I don't want to hear it. Sponsored by Sears and, uh, <laughs> and Costco. Oh, yeah. There we go. Uh, He's what do you got? Man? I'm going to go through mine fast. So Criterion Barrels, American Defense Manufacturing, Eagle Imports for the SPS. True spec German precision optics, the outdoor shop for shop local, Red Hill Tactical, Safari Land, and Dangerous But Good. Oh, there you go, Randy. What do you got? A shout outs? Oh, uh, yeah. So we got our Akai Custom Guns, SNS Casting, Fancy Red Bullets. Uh, we got Shooters Connection offering their Chill Fire Code this week, True spec Apparel. Uh, shooting sports innovations with the CUDA lubes and uh, scale grips. We got Techwear, Savigny Performance, T1 Ammo, and Red Hill Tactical. Boom, there we go. Uh, shout out to Maya, and just want to thank Randy for coming on, spending about two hours of his time with us to uh, talk about some chill fire with us here on episode 220 of the Shooter's Mindset. Definitely, uh, if you're watching on the YouTube side of things, right below the video, you see the subscribe button. Uh, hit that button every Tuesday at nine. We're doing a new episode of the shooter's mindset featuring a great guest. So if you're subscribed, you'll be in the tune with that. Uh, folks over at tactical shit, tandem cross for all your rimfire needs. If you want to email me, the shooter's mindset at gmail.com is a good way to do that. And, uh, that'll do it for episode 220 of the shooter's mindset. Thank you guys for tuning in tonight. We're out of here. See ya.